Severe weather looks pretty quiet for most of the U.S. this week, so we're going to talk about lightning and thunder, the very basic element of all thunderstorms, severe or non-severe, and maybe some fun facts you didn't know about them. Of course, we've finally been seeing some weather, some severe weather in the northern plains like we should in the month of July. A little bit of a pattern shift there from May and June. This is video I shot last week of a tree branch sideswiping my car. This is in northwestern Wisconsin where we had uh, numerous uh, trees down and some power outages in that area because of the uh, downed trees. Some large hail with those storms too, but of course the one element in all storms, lightning. And the corresponding boom afterwards. We're all familiar with that. But how exactly does that form and what are some of the key ingredients to it? And first, one more clip of some really cool lightning and thunder from the Black Hills, South Dakota last week. We're cruising down Needles Highway and it's oh. thundering out. Can you hear that? That wasn't as good as the last one. No, the last one was real scary. Right next to us. Here comes another one. It's gonna come. Ready for the boom? You hear it echoing against the mountains. Yeah. Of course, making the thunder even cooler out there, or in air, any area that you have canyons or mountains like the Grand Canyon, you get the, the sound continuing to bounce off the canyon wall so the thunder lasts even longer and can be amplified. That's Custer, uh, South Dakota, and you can see the Black Hills there. So how do we get the lightning thunder to form? Well, lightning is essentially static electricity on a big scale where you separate the charges, just like if you rub your head in the winter and you get that static electricity, you're separating the charges. What happens in a storm cloud, we separate negative and positive charges, and this happens because of all the flow within the storm. You have those rapid updrafts and downdrafts, all the precipitation rubbing against each other, snow and hail in the upper part, the cold part of the storm, rubbing up against each other. The, pot, the negative charge off of them sort of accumulates at the bottom of the storm cloud and they develop a positive charge. That's how we get those charges to separate. And then that induces a positive charge towards the ground. The two charges meet, boom, you get a flash of lightning. And then of course the thunder is the sound from the lightning, which comes much later because sound travels much slower than the speed of light. But you actually get individual sound waves at each little crack in the lightning bolt. You maybe didn't know that. That's why it's a ripply sound rather than one just consistent boom. Another fun fact, uh, thunder travels more quickly in warmer air because there's the air is less dense. There's less medium for it to travel through. So colder air, thunder travels a little bit more slowly. So the speed of thunder or sound is about 760 miles an hour. Compare that to uh, a speed of 186,000 miles per hour for the speed of light. So the light travels much quicker, but you can count basically five seconds to a mile. That's how fast sound on average travels. So if you count the seconds after the flash, you can actually tell how many miles away that lightning was. In the case of my video, it was about uh, just a couple tenths of a mile away. So there are some fun facts about lightning and thunder. 